Welcome to the Real Film Nerds Podcast. Welcome, listeners, to another exciting episode of the Real Film Nerds Podcast, episode number 214. Mark it in your books and calendars. This is the episode where Mike and I returned to the movie theater, at least for this one one movie, because we couldn't find it anywhere else other than the theaters, which is fine by me. Mike, how are you today? Man, I'm great. Feeling good after going to the theater to watch a movie. It was fun, man. How much did you spend in concessions? Uh, it was only 20 bucks. I got a popcorn and a soda. That's what I did. It was 20 bucks for a ticket of popcorn and a soda. And it was worth it. I hadn't had popcorn in a long time. The theater I went to doesn't have the best popcorn to begin with, but you just can't beat that movie theater popcorn. And I'm not a big popcorn fan, but if if I get a little bit, I do enjoy it at the theaters. Yeah, I had fun going. Uh, I ordered my food online because I was like, ah, let's see how this goes. And uh, at least for this movie, it was very simple and easy. I just showed up to, they had like a line, you know, that said like online order pickup. And I just swiped a little QR code or whatever on the phone and they just handed me stuff and were like, have a good movie. Well, I walked in to a completely empty lobby. Walked up to the, you know, lady to purchase my ticket. Actually, three ladies. There's three of them. And I purchased my ticket, my popcorn, and my soda. And I went and sat down. It was like, it was like having an old friend back being in the theaters. It was, I was giddy. It had been so long. It was great. Yeah, I, I had a great time. <laughs> I was like, sweet. I miss this. I miss watching movies. And you know what, Matt? I picked a good one. This was a lot of fun. It was okay. I enjoyed myself. As far as like a, a good one, yeah, I'd say it was good. It wasn't uh, insanely unique or special in any way, but I had a good time and enjoyed myself. Mike, uh, so why don't you give us the rundown for 2021's Nobody that just came out last week on March 26th, I believe. All right. So, Matt, uh, Nobody is directed by Ayle Nasher, uh, written by uh, Derek Colstan, and uh, it's starring uh, Bob Odenkirk, Alexei Serbravakov, I'm sure I messed that up, Connie Nelson, Christopher Lloyd, and Riza. And it's about a bystander who intervenes to help a woman being harassed by a group of men becomes the target of a vengeful drug lord. Kind of. Kind of. It's a little more elaborate than that, but yeah. And it's okay, Mike. Some of those names were very difficult. I'm sure if they ever come across this podcast, they will forgive you for butchering their names. If not, go ahead and email Mike your favorite um, uh, shitty selfie to mike at realfilmnerds.com oh thanks matt thanks matt um yeah i i i i had fun with this movie man i think this is exactly what i wanted it to be and it was great was it predictable yeah kind of but it was just fun to jo- j- jump on this train and enjoy the ride i had one issue with this film mike I thought there was going to be a little bit more humor in it. And it wasn't. It was a pretty much straightforward action shoot 'em up drama. There wasn't too much humor in this movie. You're right, man. There's a little bit of <laughs> there's a little bit of funny parts uh having to do with uh Bob Odenkirk's father. I I enjoyed that thoroughly. Oh yeah, Christopher Lloyd's parts especially with his shoddy at a particular scene was pretty good. But honestly, with the comedic talent they had in this film, I thought there would have been a li- just a little bit more comedy. Not a whole lot. I knew this was an action film going in. Bob Odenkirk was trying to, you know, break. I don't know if he wanted to break in that action world, but I know he wanted to challenge himself. So that's why he took this role. Do you think he was trying to kind of 
get out of, uh, you know, he's been uh, Saul Goodman in Breaking Bad and then... Um, uh, Better Call Saul? Better Call Saul <laughs> for, uh, uh, you know, years and years. So you think he's trying to just kind of do something different? I, I kind of felt like he was. Well, he's done a lot of stuff on the side. But as far as doing something different, an action movie is completely different than what he's known for, which are comedies, TVs, and movies. Yeah. So, uh, yep. I I had fun watching this, man. Uh, you know, it's kind of a normal type guy, a, a nobody, just going along and then you find out a little bit more about his past and i like that there's still a lot of mystery about his past so i I thought it was cool um i know this was written by uh the same guy who uh worked on the john wick series so there's definitely some elements that kind of reminded me of that and then it also kind of reminded me a little bit of uh the red movie uh movies you know the retired extremely dangerous um it just I don't know. It's just something about, I guess, the style a little bit. I don't know. Well, especially with Christopher Lloyd in it, he definitely came off as a, a good addition to this film that could have been very much uh, red inspired. And you know, those that was a fun film series. Those two films, uh, I'd say this is probably a little bit better. It's a little bit more fun. But Red, I mean, I, I guess Red is a good example. Red has quite a bit of comedy in it but it's still an action movie. I, I was thinking this was going to be more like that, but this is more serious drama action, which is fine. It's just not really what I expected. Yeah, yeah. But I think it's kind of a mashup of those two movies, and uh, I thought it worked well. Um, like I said, it's it's maybe a little bit... Pre- actually, it's really predictable, but I just thought it was fun. Like, uh, I don't know. Part of this might just be because I got to go to the movie theater, Matt. I don't know. But it was fun to go just see, like, kind of a good movie, especially after I saw Wonder Woman 1984. I kind of had to wash that off of me, and I needed to watch something good again. I'm pretty sure you still have a lot on you, because it's going to be a while before you can get that all off. Yeah, and I spent a bunch on concessions. That was going to be great. I got some, like, cheese sticks and, like... Like a little flatbread pizza thing. It, it was, I don't know, it was like $95. And then I watched that movie. Well, Mike, you know what? I think we should do a little something something for our listeners that we haven't done in a while. Oh, yes, we should, Matt. What you got? Instead of them having to go and spend $95 in concessions, I think they should sit at home and watch the brand new film giveaway we're going to do, courtesy of our friends, over at Paramount Pictures. I, I think we should do that, man. We should give that away. The movie we are going to give away, we have a handful of digital codes. Do, Mike, do you remember what they need to do to enter our contest? Absolutely, Matt. They need to tell us the last movie they saw in the theater, which ours is this movie. Nobody. Well, and I will... Mike, I forward the email to you already. Uh, huge shout out uh, to... A listener up in Michigan. She's already entered the contest. Uh, her name is Heather. I'm not going to say her last name, but Heather, welcome to the Real Film Nerds world. We love that you listen to our podcast when you are out delivering your mail. That's awesome that we're able to entertain you when you're out doing your work. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah. Um, thanks for listening. And uh, we've got plenty of more movies to review. Well, and Heather, here, you can stay at home and watch this one if you win. She's our first entry into it. Her last movie that she saw saw in theater, we also saw in the theaters, Mike, was 1917. Oh, yeah, that was awesome. Uh, I got to see a free screening of it. Oh, it was amazing. Got to see it in the the Atmos uh, theater. Oh, woo. Well, anyways, all right, Mike, back to our giveaway. Paramount Pictures supplied us with some digital copies of their latest film it just came out on friday as well it's called the vault it stars freddie highmore uh sam riley liam cunningham a whole bunch of people uh here's a quick little synopsis uh tom a genius engineering graduate is interested in the bank of spain's safe 
the bank building is more than 100 years old with no building blueprints available and a security system that includes an underground river that will flood the safe room if their walls are breached. And there's about another paragraph, but this sounds like a really intense heist movie, I guess is a good way to put it. So I'm excited. This is a big film. Uh, I think it was supposed to come out in the theaters, but like everyone else, it, a lot of it is just turned into streaming just so they can get them out. So anyways, well, thank you very much, Paramount. Make sure, tell us the last movie you saw in theaters to be entered to win. And we already have a handful of entries, as I said. Thanks again, Heather, for reaching out. Here is my business that I'm supposed to read. Here we go. Now on digital, Freddie Highmore and Astrid Burgess Frisbee with Fonku Jansen star in the action-packed thriller The Vault. Buy or rent it today. A team of master thieves attempt to pull off the score of a lifetime by breaking into the world's most impenetrable, ugh, impenetrable, there we go, vault to steal the legendary lost treasure locked inside. Buy or rent the vault tonight and bring the exhilarating adventure home. It is rated R. And again, it is from our friends over at Paramount. All right, Matt. That sounds cool. The vault. I feel like I just talked a whole lot. So anyways, Mike, your turn to talk. <laughs> I did talk. You did talk a lot, man. Um, Matt, I, I think it's it's time for an important question. Uh, what are you drinking this evening? <sighs> well, Mike, thank you for asking. As I like to re- say every week. Uh, in honor of baseball continuing to roll out, Hopefully season will be here very soon. I'm drinking the Rattle On Red Ale by Four Peaks Brewing Company. That is the Diamondbacks beer. Very cool, Matt. Very cool. I'm also drinking uh, the same thing as last week. Little little Paps Blue Ribbon. Little PBR. All right. All right. Yeah. PBR. Not professional bull uh, writing professional bull riding see that that just sounds like that would be like the perfect sponsor for the pbr would be pbr but i never see a pbr at the pbr so but then they could be like pbr squared that would be fun i think uh i don't know they could dress up like all the bulls with like little beer cans and i mean uh, this is a million dollar idea i need to call them up both of them (laughs) you do this is a million dollar idea yeah this is amazing Except for that's a whole lot of PBR to pay for that. I mean, come on, I mean, gosh, Mike, uh, what did what did you get? Like a thirty pack of PBR? Oh, it was like a twenty four pack. Yeah, it, it cost what, like three fifty? <laughs> it wasn't quite three fifty, but it wasn't very expensive though. It was not very expensive. But it's a delightful beer because it's Pabst Blue Ribbon. I mean, it won awards. It's called Blue Ribbon, Mike. Yes, it won awards in what, like uh, um, America's Best in 1893. <laughs> hey, you know, 100 years strong, 100 years strong, you know, over 100 years. <laughs> yeah, it was uh, established in Milwaukee in 1844, dude. Classic, classic. Well, all right, Mike, it is my turn to ask my question. I know you had difficulty with this, but Mike, how does 2021's nobody relate to the marvel cinematic universe thanks for asking matt uh so this this one i was having trouble with as usual you know i picked the movie i can't find who it is and then, so, my wonderful partner in crime, Matt, uh, gets on his computer and two seconds later finds it. I don't know. I guess I'm just not very good at my job. And uh, You know what it is, so, Mike? I'm what in is it? tune with the MCU. Because oh. I just ooze nerdism. <laughs> I think you do or <laughs> ooze nerdism, uh, if that's a th- if that's even a thing okay anyway i'm making it a thing now 
Okay. Well, what color is the ooze? Bright orange, of course. Oh, all right. I was thinking it was going to be kind of like this uh, kind of clearish pink stuff like uh, on Ghostbusters 2. Hey, you know what? Maybe let's go with Sherbert. I just ooze Sherbert. Oh, that'd be good. I haven't had Sherbert in a while. It's good stuff. Me neither. Sherbert is good. Um, All right. So uh, the MCU tie-in for this one, uh, courtesy of Matt, is um, Justin Howell uh, worked uh, as a stuntman on this movie, uh, Nobody, and also worked on Avengers Infinity War and Avengers Endgame. Good job, Mike. I mean, good job, me. I mean, good job, Mike. Yes. Good job, Matt. Thanks for that. You're welcome, Mike. I know you're having a hard time. So, okay, kids, for those of you who are in the know and are, who are cool with the Real Film Nerds podcast, you know, what what are we going to call our, our listeners, Mike? Didn't we have an, a term at one point? Didn't you call them nerdarinos? Nerdarinos. Yeah, I like that. Let's do that. So for our uh, nerdarinos that are in the know, this is now our spoiler territory. Mike, uh, go ahead, open it up. Talk about uh, the most spoilery spoiler of spoilers for nobody. Um, I don't know what to say when you give me that sort of intro, man. Um, I guess I'll just talk about um, the fight he, scenes. He I don't doesn't know. have a dog, and the dog does not get murdered. Boom. Done. All right, that's true. Yes, there's no dog. There is a kitten, but the kitten is fine, everybody. The kitten is fine. I like that's how they opened it, too. They really opened it in an interesting, interesting way. Yeah, yeah. Um, first off, the uh, this is the, the opening scene. He's he, he lights up some cigarette, and he's, uh, you know, being interviewed by the police, or at least he's in the police interview room nothing's really being said and he lights off a cigarette but the rest of the movie you never see him smoke it's just for that scene well mike i like the opening sentence of this film do you remember is it who are you it's who the fuck are you and bob odenkirk replies nobody well, he's about to say it, and then it cuts. Yeah, it cuts right? to it, the title it, scene. It, but yeah, I, yeah, I, I have yeah, to say it, that's like, like one of the best like opening lines in a movie ever. I, I was hoping that it was going to be good, and uh, I don't know. I really liked the way that they they told the story. I like the mystery of not knowing all of uh, our our main character Bob Odenkirk's um, past, and I thought that was just fine um i enjoyed the uh uh the riding of the bus like (laughs) um i don't know i got the feeling that they were like they were not like super strapped for cash but not super wealthy but also trying to like save up for stuff so i felt like he was taking the bus to just save some money and stuff but it was just interesting the 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 montage of like um you know monday through friday pretty much you think after missing the trash once he would get it right because that's a big deal missing that trash oh man i i like when they show that that scene i was like that's not right this is like the third week man that thing would be like beyond overflowing oh yeah what did you do yep yeah, there would be trash everywhere. It'd be all up and down the street. He'd have three cans at that point. Yep. E- either that, or, or I mean, I guess he could have taken it somewhere. You know, like um, uh, go behind the old convenience store or whatever and throw it away in the dumpsters. But he, did you know there's and that's actually a crime? Yes. It's a theft of service. <laughs> man, I, I had no idea, man. I've definitely slowed down as much throwing away things in other trash bins. Like, I don't do it as much. That's where I go shopping. So I encourage everyone to throw things out in dumpsters, especially the things that are nice, so I can go get them. 
Now, Matt, it's 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 been a while since I've lived in Arizona, but do you have trash pandas out there? Of course we have trash pandas, but not everywhere. Like, we actually don't have many around here, even though we live in the mountains. What we have here is way worse than trash pandas. What do you got? We got the wild peccary. Okay. All right. Don't you know what a wild peccary is, Mike? No, I have no idea. It's just that's going the, along with it. That's the technical term for a javelina oh is it really yes huh okay yeah uh anyway uh, out out in my neck of the woods here out on the east coast there's a lot of uh trash pandas and raccoons and man those things kind of freak me out always when they're like playing with their hands like they're they're always just like licking them and stuff it's like super creepy if you've ever just watched them (laughs) I I would be more on the lookout for ones that have like rockets and you know assault rifles, but you know whatever, Mike. Yeah, yeah, that those ones are also you know interesting, um, and related to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Oh, dude, all comes back around again. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Complete circle. But no, we have javelinas, and the javelinas knock over the trash and get it all up and down the street, and yeah, it's bad. It's really bad, and they're a a nuisance. In Arizona, there is no law restricting how many javelina you want to kill. Like, if you're a hunter and you want to kill javelina, you can kill as many as you want. They don't care because they are so overpopulated. I was talking with, uh, I think it was one of my coworkers recently, like, why do we have so many javelina and why there's such a problem now? Because what used to eat javelinas is now clearly not around as much. And I was trying to figure out what the hell would eat a javelina. Probably like a bear or like a cougar or something. Yeah, like mountain lions or, or what? Right. Yeah, mountain lions or cougars, bears. And, and, you know, all those, I guess, are in short supply as people move in on their territories, I guess. I don't know. Anyways, they're they're obnoxious, and I will get off the topic of javelinas. Okay. All right. That's fine, man. We don't have to talk about javelinas anymore. They're ground trash pandas? But no, trash pandas run around on the ground, too. Huh. They do. Yeah. We, we can just move along from the trash and talk about this nice movie. Okay, Mike. Then talk about this nice movie called Nobody. Um, I don't know. I... I like being at the theater. It was a lot, it was fun to to watch this action movie. I'm fascinated w- with uh, some of the things that they didn't explain. Like uh, there's a scene in this movie where he's he's talking to like an old radio, and I guess it's it's a communication device in some way. But it's it's weird because it's like crystal clear. So like it didn't seem like it was real like RF. Like it seemed like it was some sort of other thing oh no i think they're trying to say it was some kind of short-term or long-term radio you know wave radio communication with someone that is clearly in hiding that we get to find out later but we literally don't find anything out about the guy i mean he shows up it's the same voice and he has a long rifle with a silencer that he's picking people off at close range that's fine it's a mess he has one of the best shots in the movie he drops three of them with one you know Nice, nice blow <laughs> with his long gun. But uh, you never find out who his name. You you know he used to work with Bob Odenkirk in some measure. And then that's it. Like, you never find out anymore. Yeah, I kind of like some of that stuff because it leaves us wondering more about this universe and stuff. So, I don't know. Uh, that was fun to me. Uh, I wish some of the stuff, like, was a little bit more addressed with, uh, like just a little bit more about his background with his family and how he met his wife and stuff would have been a little nice. And like, maybe what, what was kind of going on with their, their dynamic, because, uh, although we kind of know there's, there's some issues in his, uh, home life with his, his wife and actually kind of with his family and, uh, like his, his teenage son and, and, uh, him don't get along and, him and his wife seem very distant. Like even in their their bedroom, they had like a pillow wall, which I thought was really strange. Um, <laughs> in their bed, um, 
And uh, I wish we found out just a little bit more. I don't know. Like, I guess we kind of hear about it towards, uh, like, when she's patching up Bob Odenkirk uh, from his first uh, rendezvous with some some people. But I wish I, I we got a little bit more, just a little bit more out of that. Well, you find out that his wife has been with him longer than he's been not an auditor. So she's like, oh, it's back to like the old days. And she's sitting there using super glue, gluing his skin together where he was shanked. And so she clearly knows what she's doing when it comes to quick medical procedures for someone that has been jacked up pretty good. So she must have been with him when he was an otter, at least at some level. And now it's continued on. And maybe him not being an otter or having that excitement doesn't thrill her. Oh, I don't know. I mean, Matt, that totally could be. But they didn't really, I don't know, elaborate too much, you know? It, it seemed like he was kind of, uh, Bob Odenkirk's character was kind of in a rut. And this kind of kicked him out of the rut. And uh, But, you know... At the same time, it's it's not great to for him to go around just, you know, murdering tons of people. So, I don't know. It's kind of a hard hard um threshold to like maintain, you know, like like how do you keep him at this this energy level without killing a bunch of people? I don't think it was so much about an energy level, but you were saying that his son didn't like him and that isn't necessarily true. His son isn't a big fan of him because as the film opens, there's a robbery robbery in their home and Bob Odenkirk notices lots of things that he explains later and he did not fight back against the people that broke in the home because he realized that they were nobodies worse than he was. They were scared. They didn't even have a loaded gun. So he was going to just butcher these people basically in front of his son and his son holds it against him that he didn't do anything. So up to that point, we don't know how the relationship is between Bob Odenkirk's character and his sons, but I don't know. It's yeah. From then on, it's clearly strained until there's a scene where they come after Bob Odenkirk. He shoves his whole family down in the basement, locks the door to his fireproof basement or whatever it is, his incinerator basement. I think it's a safe room, Matt. I think it was built as a safe room kind of. Well, but it that's, w- what I, that's what I thought. It wasn't that safe if he lights the house on fire and it comes out of there and lights the rest of it on fire. You know what I mean? I don't know, man. It, to me, it seemed like a safe room. It was safe enough, but it wasn't fireproof. I mean, he lit the whole house on fire from that room. So it yeah, wasn't but he did it in a special safe. way. He did it in a special way. And it had all this extra incendiary devices in there. Wonderful. It still spread. If it was a safe room, you shut the door and it wouldn't spread. But anyways, that's not here nor there, Mike. What, what, one thing I did uh, kind of like about this movie, it's just a little bit odd, was uh, Bob Odenkirk's character was um, kind of talking to people that he had beaten up and uh, and just kind of confessing or, or you know, just talking about what he did or whatever. And like both times... Uh, there was at least two times in the movie where he did it. They both died. And he's like, oh, I didn't even get out everything I was trying to say. Like, yeah, like he was, it seemed like he was just trying to get something off his chest. <laughs> but He's using his victims for therapy is what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, he was, he was using his victims for therapy. It was interesting, I guess. You know, I, I actually just saw a movie that was similar Matt. um we haven't reviewed it on the pod but it's called ava it's on netflix it was it was it's pretty good yeah i haven't watched that yet i i've heard it was pretty good but yeah jessica chastain's in it well, yeah we're talking about nobody though mike i know i know <laughs> i'm just i'm just i'm just letting the nis- listeners know that you know we watch all kinds of things it's we don't always have a chance to review everything and i mean right now man there's I feel like the backup of all the movies that were supposed to come out is just, they're just like, ah, screw it. And they're just dropping them all. They're like, here you go. Yeah. I mean, we're getting a few that way. That's for sure. You know, I mean, next week we're getting a brand new movie to talk about. Very controversial movie. The director reached out to us. So I don't know if it counts as my pick or not, because it's not really a pick. We are obliging the director. And that is a Roe v. Wade. Yeah, man. We'll have to try not to get political on that one. 
yeah, like that's going to happen. Good luck. Yeah, we'll talk. We'll, we'll see. We'll talk about it. We'll see how it goes. Yeah, we'll we'll talk about it. We we will talk about it. It, it. You know, maybe it'll get us some some listens. You know, we we could use some of that hate. I know you like the hate, Mike. That's why you want the shitty selfies sent to you at Mike at realfilmnerds dot com. That's M I K E at realfilmnerds dot com. Just make sure everybody's got it. Thanks, thanks, Matt. You're welcome. Thanks. I know you like them. I know you like that that hate mail of full of shitty selfies. So here, here's my not, something that's not hate. Here's my favorite scene from Nobody. One of my favorite scenes was Christopher Lloyd when they go after him and he has a double barreled shotgun. Yeah, no that that was that was a wonderful scene, Matt. It was it was fun to see Christopher Lloyd in a movie again. I hadn't seen him really in anything in a long time, and it was a little sad to see him as like a, uh, like a grandfather type figure. But his character was awesome in this. He wasn't in it much. But every minute he was on screen, it was awesome. Yeah, it was great. I loved how uh, after he shot the guys with his double barreled shotgun, the nurse runs in, like wakes up, runs in, turn down the TV. <laughs> he was watching a western, so good. While he was while he was suffocating the guy who he didn't quite kill yet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What was it? Uh, he what was his name? Arthur, I think, was his character's name. No, David. David Manzel. Yeah, I like how uh, Bob Odenkirk's character calls him up. You, Pops, you know that thing I told you about? It's gotten a little, it's gotten a little bigger. Heads up. Yeah, he, he just gives. That's him a heads all up. he said. Yep. That's all he said. Well, and then you know you you find out that his pops was in one of those uh, three letter agencies that Bob Odenkirk is an auditor for. So maybe Pops. Might have been like a pre auditor. Yeah, I, I, I don't know, Matt, Matt. There's that scene. There's a scene in the tattoo parlor, which was kind of interesting, and it, you know nothing's explained, of course. But um, one of the tattoo guys, I think he's an artist, or I don't know exactly what his role was. He was a little older guy, and he saw Bob Odenkirk's arm. Or right underneath his wrist, he saw uh, a tattoo, and uh, immediately like gets spooked and like just disappears. And like everyone else who's like they're they're close to coming to blows and like they're gonna rob him and all this stuff. And then everyone backs off. I thought that was interesting. It's a little bit more elaborate than that, Mike. But yes, the old dude was clearly a veteran from a war of some kind. He's clearly like the owner or the big bad of like the tattoo shop other than the young guys. And the young guys aren't messing with him and he gets spooked and runs off and you hear him locking his door 9,000 different ways. Almost like it was very comedic. That was one of their comedic parts. And then all the other guys are like, uh, okay, I guess we're not going to mess with this dude. But whatever his tattoo is, and it wasn't even the full tattoo, it was only partial says you know he knew exactly who he was that he was an auditor for the military and he even the old guy even says thank you for your service and then runs away <laughs> yes he did say thank you for his service and then ran away yeah. so whatever bob odenkirk was in is clearly known to people that are in the military at least at some level and they're very scary people and so that's why he ran off <laughs> he, he knew better he's like yeah if if this guy's coming to look for me then this is the the last face I'll ever see kind of thing. Yeah, no, I, I thought that was a very poignant scene to be like, oh man, who is this nobody? All right, Mike, so anything else you want to add in our spoiler zone? No, no, I, I think I'm good. Uh, Matt, did you see, I, I, it's not like an in trailer, uh, in credit scene, but like the mid credit scene, I guess. With the um, uh, Christopher Lloyd and, and Riz's character driving the RV with the cargo. Yeah, it's all loaded up with uh, tons and tons and tons of guns. And they didn't say where they were going. I don't remember. I think, uh, it did, they didn't say, but I think it was because we saw in the last scene in the movie, uh, 
Bob Odenkirk's character and his wife, they they need a new house, obviously. Burn down the, the other house. I feel like they were moving somewhere different part of the country. And uh, they needed to transport some precious goods. Yeah, but he, he wasn't loaded to the teeth like that in his old house. Maybe he just wants to be prepared now. I don't know. You, you never know, right? Clearly, there's probably going to be an attempt at maybe a sequel. That's that's what the little little teaser shows me, that they're traveling. I think that means they're going to have a sequel. Oh, and uh, Riz's character, was he, he was the one that was the dude on the radio, right? Correct. His name on IMDb is Harry Manziel. So that's oh, everyone is Manzel. Like uh, Bob Odenkirk is Hutch. Uh, his wife is Becca Manzel. His dad is David Manzel, and so um, Riz is Harry Manzel. So I wonder if he's like a stepbrother or like a cousin. Oh, it is his brother. There was that picture. Yeah, there's that one picture. So it's probably his brother. Yeah, it's probably his brother. Now it makes a little more sense. Now we pull that out, and he was the one that was in hiding, huh? So they were probably auditors together, and pops interesting, is the, probably the original auditor. I don't know, man, but uh, that was uh, y- you're right, Matt. They're probably going to do a sequel, uh, especially since uh, this movie uh, led the box office this last weekend, six and a half million, I think, or six point seven million. Yeah, six point seven million uh take for the box office which i know compared to uh the olden days is nothing but uh post pandemic that's like that's like king of the world all right mike so how many reels do you give the king of the world oh that's that's good man this is good leading <laughs> um i'm gonna give this one four stars out of five four I like stars it we don't do stars the hell's going on here four reels four reels man See, Mike, this is why we try and record when you're not falling asleep, because then you can think. Like, you were having a hard time processing things earlier. Like, I could I could see the gears spinning. I could watch the smoke churning out the ears, but, you know, I know it's difficult. Hey, this daylight savings time thing is a load of crap, man. It just makes our, our uh, uh, time difference even more. Well, Mike, you know what? I don't have to deal with that, so I'm okay with it. We could go back to doing weekends, but someone is popular and running around having fun on weekends, Mike. Yes, yes. His name is Matt. Yeah, right. I'm out making money on the weekends. You're, you're, you, but you're too busy, man. Uh, you, t- tell the listeners, Matt, how, how easy it was for you to get to the theater this weekend. It was very difficult for me to get to the theater, but I got there late Sunday night, so I went. <laughs> Well, that's the other kicker is they don't have like late shows. Like I can make late shows. Our latest shows now are like six and seven o'clock. I'm like, yeah, our 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 uh, selections have dropped. There are no more morning movies, and uh, it's it's yeah. There's a lot less show times. Give me a nine. Give me a nine thirty. I'll be okay with that. But seven o'clock is your latest show. That's difficult for me to make. Anyways. Okay, Mike. Well, um, I also give nobody four out of five reels. I mean, stars. Ah, oh, man. All right. I'm sorry, man. <laughs> All right. So next week, we're going to do Roe v. Wade. We already talked about that. Uh, don't forget to hit up our contest. Tell us what movie you saw in the theater last. Other than that, my guy, I don't have a whole lot else. Uh, go check out Nobody. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. Check it out. Um. Thanks, everybody, uh, for listening. And uh, make sure you send us the last movie that you saw at the theater. We're interested to find out. And, um, yeah, you know, uh, go out there and stream as many movies as you can. Or, or if you feel comfortable, go out to the theater like Matt and I did. It was it was fun. And uh, if you want the theaters to be around any longer, you might want to try and get out there. Uh, catch us on the socials, uh, Facebook, Instagram twitter and uh we'll catch you next week with roe v wade thanks everybody for listening thank you for listening to the real film nerds now don't forget to follow us on facebook twitter and instagram at real film nerds now go out and catch a movie
It's the moment we've all been waiting for. Matt Hinshaw from the Real Film Nerds podcast on the line on magic. Am I right or am I right? You're 100% right, Miss Live. <laughs> How you doing, buddy? I'm doing wonderful. How are you? Oh, I'm so glad to hear that. I'm doing great as well. Did you uh, get to go see a movie at the theater this past weekend? I did, and I, it's the first movie I've seen in the theater since Tenet, which I think was either June or July of last year. So it was like revisiting an old best friend. Oh, that is wonderful. Yeah, I don't remember the last movie I saw in a theater. It might have been Rocket Man, and you know how long ago that was. Uh, I can't even give you a date on that. Yeah. It's been so long. Pre-COVID. Pre-COVID for <laughs> sure. Okay, so everybody's loving nobody. What would you think? I loved it as well. I thought it was wonderful. It was really a lot of fun. It is a hardcore action film. I was expecting a little bit more humor in it. Yeah. But other than that, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was great. Oh, wonderful. Okay, so tell us a little bit about it. Uh, basically, he is what's known as an auditor or a hitman for the many three-lettered uh, alphabet agencies in the United States government, and he has decided to retire. Okay. But he gets a little upset one day after his home is broken into and he does nothing about it. And so he takes his aggressions out on some people on a bus only to find out that one of those people on the bus was a member of the Russian mob, and the Russian mob decides to strike back. Uh -oh. And that's where the chaos begins. <laughs> <laughs> I can only imagine. So Rotten Tomatoes yeah. gave it 81%. 93% of the people liked the movie. What would be something that would turn you off from the movie? If you don't like violence, uh, that's definitely not something you want to go and see. Um, the, the story has been done over and over and over again. Uh, it's uh, written, produced, uh, directed, something like that by someone that was involved with John Wick. And so it's very much in the vein of John Wick, but okay. with Bob Odenkirk. So it's kind of, I don't want to say a rehashing, but the story's been told before kind of thing. Sure. This is just in a different way. Um, I Honestly, being Bob Odenkirk, being a well-known comedic actor, uh, this is his first action film, I really expected a little bit more comedy. So that kind of turned me off from okay. it. All right. But I didn't know that until I was all the way through it, you know. Sure. So. Sure. Okay, well, how many reels are you going to give it? I, like I said, I really enjoyed it. It was well worth it seeing in the theaters. Um, if you like these hardcore action movies, shoot 'em up films that are definitely more in the vein of realistic versus something like Rambo, I definitely recommend go checking it out. I give it a four out of five. Four out it. of five. And do you think that the theater experience lended to that, or you think you would have enjoyed it at home as well? I probably would have enjoyed it at home, but I think being in the theater helps, especially with a big action blockbuster like this, because no matter what theater it is, they're going to have a better sound system and they're going to have a better, crisper image than I'm going to have at home, right. even if I have a really good sound system and television. So. Right, right. Well, you can see it at the Picture Show and at the Harkins mm -hmm. in uh, Prescott Valley. What are we going to talk about next week? So next week is a bit of a controversial film, and the only reason my co-host and I are going to do it is because we were contacted directly by the director and asked if we would review it for him. Wow. It's not getting a whole yeah, yeah, it's and it's not a small film either. It's a pretty big film, but it is extremely controversial, and people are staying away from it because what the topic is, is it is uh, Roe versus Wade is oh, the name of the film. Okay, yeah, very controversial topic, and uh, you're going to watch it yep. let us know what you think. Yep, and it, you know, even though the director is the one that reached out to us and everything, it doesn't mean we're. He, they have to understand we're not going to be biased towards the film or not. We right. give our honest opinion. Yeah, and a couple times in the past with some of these independent films, they got very mad at us for being honest. Well, that's so. all you can be is honest. I mean, you're a movie critic. That's what you do. Hey, I want to tell you, I saw four yeah. movies over the weekend. Four, count them. How did you watch so many movies when it was literally the best <laughs> weather we've had all year? Well, let's just say I was recuperating, okay? I was recuperating. And so oh, I watched okay. um, Sound of Metal. I watched mm -hmm. Borat. I haven't seen that yet. Oh, my gosh. You've got to watch it. It was great. It was just as good as the first <laughs> one, really. I watched White Tiger. Did you see that? No, I, I don't, I'm not even familiar with that film. And I watched one uh, more. It's not ringing a bell. Okay. Um, and I watched Promising Young Woman. That's impressive. I'm very impressed, Lisa. Very impressed. 
Thank you. Thank you. Yes. And uh, I enjoyed I enjoyed them all. So um, I'll uh, I'll have to check out nobody too. although I'm not into a big shoot 'em up violent kind of movie. Since you recommended it, I'll check it out. Well, but I don't know. I mean, if you're not into action and violence, I mean, did you ever see John Wick? I did not. Okay, well, go watch John Wick because I think John Wick is infinitely better, and it's Keanu Reeves. I mean, and he's an action superstar. Right. If you enjoy John Wick, you'll enjoy nobody. Okay, fair enough. Matt Hinshaw from the Real Film Nerds podcast. Always a delight chatting with you on a Monday morning. It's it's the only way to start my Mondays off, Lisa. Chatting <laughs> with you. Checks in the mail. Talk to you next week. Talk to you next week. Bye.